Salut! This is Elena from Elena the Expat and today I'm in Chisinau. But instead of showing you the beauties of the city, I want to show you the city through the eyes of the expats. Why do they come here? How much money they make here? What do they work? And finally, what are the things that they like and dislike about Moldova? Our today's guest is Azuma San. He's a person who came all the way to Japan to open a business here in Moldova. So without further ado, let's meet our hero. So Azuma San, you've been here for how long? Uh, it's been 10 months now. Oh wow. Yes. And what made you come to Moldova? What's your story? Before I came to Moldova, I was um, working in Lao. Mm -hmm. Abeba Harvey, in Southeast Lao. Asia? Yes, that's right. It's uh, next to Thailand mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are doing the same business mm -hmm. like uh, importing from Japan and selling Japanese products. And uh, I was there for four years mm -hmm. and I was working for a company there. I was thinking maybe it's the time for me to get independent mm -hmm. from the company and I wanted to try by myself. Mm -hmm. And that time uh, there was a uh, like investor mm -hmm. uh, he was traveling romania and moldova mm -hmm. for the ukraine refugee program oh and he saw a lot of uh, sushi restaurant here you <laughs> know uh, comparing with other countries uh, in the small area with uh, this kind this many sushi restaurant it's like uh, almost uh, number one amount. Oh one. wow, yeah. I didn't know that. We also want to expand in other Europe mm -hmm. country also. So it's a good first step. Oh, in, first step yeah. in Europe. And he suggested me how is the Moldova. So I decided to come here. I'm sure that before coming here, you yes. had some sort of expectations of mm -hmm. how Moldova would be, maybe something you read online. First, I didn't know the name Moldova, mm -hmm. the country name Moldova. So I looked up on the internet and I found some information like uh, when I write down Moldova, mm -hmm. it's say like a poorest country in Europe mm -hmm. or something. So I was thinking maybe less cars and uh, no shopping mall, not much restaurant, mm -hmm. not much place to go. That's my first thought, mm -hmm. yes. But actually when I get here, first of all, the airport was like uh, very um, nice and clean. Mm -hmm. And when I look outside, I see like many tons of tons of cars and those cars are like very luxury cars. Oh, so. yes. <laughs> Moldovans are known for buying luxury cars. Oh, and I, I feel like from many foreigners, I hear how shocked they are at the amount of Lexuses ah, and yes, Teslas right. and expensive cars, yes, yes, yes. although it's like a poor country overall. Uh -huh. And also there is a lot of um, shopping malls mm -hmm. here. Yes, true. So I felt like uh, it's um, developed. So when you came here from mm -hmm. Laos, yes. uh, was it a big adjustment? Uh, ah. You came in... Uh, yes, first I came here December. Actually. Oh, yeah. so it was been, so cold. Yeah. I came for here to like uh, check if I really can mm -hmm. survive here or not. <laughs> Normally it's 30, 35 uh, degrees in Laos and then I fly to here. Moldova. What happened is like uh, minus 5, minus <laughs> 10. So the gap is like uh, 35 That's crazy. degrees something. So I had to uh, purchase some mm -hmm. of the winter clothes, clothes at the Thailand and then I came to Moldova. Was it difficult and is it difficult for you because you don't speak mm -hmm. the language to do daily stuff here in Moldova? Yes. Luckily I had uh, some like people who helped to me even though it's kind of hard I still could make it everything like a uh, finding the apartment or uh, what is it like a get the visa mm -hmm. to live here. And what about speaking English here in Moldova? Mm -hmm. Like if you go into a restaurant or a shop, you speak English without yes. your friend, would you be able to survive? Hopefully um, all the restaurants have a picture. So mm -hmm. if there is a picture, I mm -hmm. try to point them and then order. Mm -hmm. So I could still order, yes. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like, uh, sometimes I feel like buying some already cooked meal mm -hmm. at the uh, number one, etc. Mm -hmm. And when I try to order this, like how many grams, I'm still struggling. Oh yes. yeah, <laughs> to use your yes. actually language. That's right, yeah. 
from the moment you came in yes. December, mm -hmm. uh, I bet you needed an apartment somewhere yes, to stay. Right. Like, how did that play out for you? Okay, for the short time, um, I decided to use the booking.com uh -huh. and I found some uh, hotels, mm -hmm. apartments, so I use it and then, yeah, I stayed here for one week in uh, hotel and apartment. And uh, because you had to go back, this was not the time when you found your current apartment? No, uh -huh. it's not, yes. So uh, when you returned, you started yes. looking for it by yourself or? I used the uh, agency. Uh -huh. I think this agency was introduced from my friends mm -hmm. and then I contacted them and they could speak English. Can you tell us a bit more details about what you were looking in an apartment besides yes. being walking distance from your job yes. and like what is the price range for the apartment? I see. This is the first year of the company for myself so I didn't really want to spend a lot. I decided to have, I don't know if it's a cheap or expensive but I was looking for some places starting from 300 euro mm -hmm. to maybe around 400 euro mm -hmm. after I told them the budget and the area and they list up some of the places and inspection mm -hmm. I go check to check the apartment yes how many apartments did you see before actually settling for um, one I have a just choice like five minutes on foot, ten minutes on foot. Oh, so you just want it like very, very close to your yes, job. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. In that case, they offer me um, one, around four places mm -hmm. I, I've been and checked. Mm -hmm. In those four places I've been, there was like three of them were kind of over 400 euro. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I decided to take one with uh, 360 euro. Mm -hmm. There is uh, two living room i'd uh -huh. say and um, one kitchen uh -huh. and toilet bathroom separated uh -huh. yes and then once you did decide on the apartment yes um how many months in advance did you have to pay to secure the apartment i paid the uh, one month rent uh -huh. right before i started and also one month uh, amount of one month rent, I mm -hmm. did the deposit. Deposit, so yes. just two months. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Was there anything interesting or unusual or weird about Moldovan apartments? Ah, uh, nothing is very strange, but the one part I was kind of got scared at the mm -hmm. first time is like uh, every door has a sticker. Uh -huh which have a uh, cross? cross in the ah. middle, yes. So like for <laughs> foreigners watching, uh, when you buy a new apartment, if you are religious in Moldova, you would put the stickers, actually the priest would come to put the stickers mm -hmm. because they sanctify the apartment. Yeah, so those yeah, are yeah. crucifixes just to hold the devil away. Yes, yes. <laughs> so first <laughs> Nothing I, to be scared of. Yeah, I didn't know, so I looked at it or, or maybe they tried this place have something and ah. they try to keep <laughs> Maybe exercise I the yeah. devil <laughs> yeah no it's just, uh, like it's unusual but that's yes. a standard practice okay. here okay. yeah now japan have a different kind of building recently but uh, before when i was um, when i grew up there the houses are very cold in japan mm. very thin um, walls walls window but here it's a uh, very how can I say? Well, insulated. Sealed. Yeah, insulated. Yeah, that's right. So, what are your favorite places now that you've been here in Moldova for a while? Something that you like to do I outside see. of work? Uh, mainly, at, I'm at office, and little time I'm at uh, apartment, so I don't really go out or uh, uh, spend time in outside. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I like to go to cafe. Mm -hmm. Yes, to get uh, coffee. It's a uh, Nearby the shop, we have a Leonard mm -hmm. cafe. So I just walk there and then grab coffee and get back to work mm -hmm. or walking around mm -hmm. a little bit, yes. So I decided to go to uh, Krikova. Oh, winery. the winery. Yes, mm -hmm. they have underground cellars. cellars. I've never experienced something like mm -hmm. that. And uh, I was pretty excited and I love the place, yes. And I heard uh, uh, Mimi winery. winery. That's also, also very beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful, and they have castle there. Yes. So I'm. I'd love to mm -hmm. go there. Do you miss um, Japanese food here in Moldova? 
Uh, yes, I do. I pretty much do. Um, of course, there is some Japanese restaurant, uh, but uh, it's kind of different style. Mm -hmm. It's more like uh, uh, European style. Yeah, how Europeans view yes. Japanese cuisine. Yes, yes. This Japanese guy, uh, Mr. Imura, mm -hmm. he opened up his own restaurant. It's called uh, Asian Street. Asian Street, yes. okay. They have a pretty good lunch with the 99 lei, so I always visit there. So, Azuma-san, we are finally in your store. Yes. Uh, let me tell you, it looks amazing. Thank you very but much. But I want to find out how yes. easy or difficult was it to um, mm -hmm. actually found an import business here in Moldova as a foreigner? I see. Um, I feel it's not that difficult because um, I could um, start business here, open up the company. It take only like uh, two, three days. Oh, so fast. Yes. Um, there was uh, like a business consulting company. Uh -huh. They helped me to open up the company. I just needed to bring some of the, like a passport, some documents, and then they just um, prepare everything. Cost me like uh, uh, $1,000. Mm -hmm. So after I have the license, I have to prepare this kind of shelves, uh -huh. which cost me like uh, 3,000, 4,000 USD. Mm -hmm. And also um, staff mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, rent. Mm -hmm. When it comes to this place, it's uh, clean and new. Mm -hmm. They gave me nice price, something like around 1,300, 400 euro per month. Per month? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay the light, the water on top of that. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. When it comes to importing, mm -hmm. I have to pay in advance and um, that cost me like mm -hmm. full truck of the item, which mm -hmm. is kind of huge. And I have to wait for like two months oh, from Japan for to the here. Shipment. Yes. So from the moment when you went uh, to the agency and gave your um, you know, paperwork, your mm -hmm. documents, yes. uh, how long did it pass until you actually started working on the shop? I see. Um, set up the company is kind of easy, as I said. Uh -huh. it, Cost, uh, takes me like uh, two, three days. Uh -huh. But uh, when it comes to have the shop, actually now I'm working on the second shopping center. Oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> um, it's taking me around like uh, one month. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, because um, when it comes to having uh, food, mm -hmm. something like this, oh. uh, before we sell, we have to uh, have a permission from oh. ANSA. Mm -hmm. It's an institution here in Moldova. Mm -hmm. So I have to prepare all the things they need mm -hmm. before they give me mm -hmm. the uh, permission mm -hmm. to open. It takes me around three weeks, four weeks. What about yes. inspections? Because mm -hmm. I know that's a very difficult part of I setting think. shop. Mm -hmm. What was your experience? Um, I actually had a friend who is helping me to open up this shop. Mm. So she helped me what I need one by one mm -hmm. and I just needed to follow those things. Mm -hmm. So for example, we had like uh, um, fire security to oh, mm -hmm. install the shop. Also like a ventilation, uh, ventilation system uh -huh. it's called. Yeah, this, um, and also we set uh, full cleaning. We needed to have a contract with the cleaning company and insect control. Mm. Mm -hmm. They, uh, since we sell some food, so um, before we open, we needed to have uh, that kind of uh, control. We need to prepare the shelf in the, it's called the deposit. Mm -hmm. We call mm -hmm. it warehouse, but the uh, deposit. And then they uh, register the deposit and the shop, and then we could open. How much money and how much time did all those inspections take? Um, uh, inspection itself, actually, um, probably after I, um, how it's called, apply, uh -huh. it took me like a week okay. until they come and check. Mm -hmm. After they come and check, uh, they told me some part need to be fixed and then maybe another one week to um, do those things, mm -hmm. yes. Maybe something around 2,500 or $3,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. 
did you feel that the fact mm -hmm. that you couldn't speak the language Russian or Romanian here mm -hmm. in Moldova, it was more difficult to communicate with the inspectors um, or did you uh, rely on see. the friend? If I'm um, alone uh -huh. on my own, then probably difficult since um, some people they speak, um, like they cannot speak English. But uh, uh, luckily I have uh, staff and this person who helps me. So I could um, ask them what they're saying and then I could explain in English and then they can mm -hmm. translate it for me. So I know that opening actually a store is the easiest part. The most mm -hmm. difficult part is actually running the store and making sure it's successful. Okay, is yes. it so? Of course, um, <laughs> when I import all the, those things, I was pretty nervous, but uh, luckily I made it. And yes, um, running a shop is kind of difficult, yes. So what are the main challenges of running a shop here in Moldova? Um, I think um, not specifically only in Moldova, mm -hmm. but um, this kind of business, like uh, importing mm -hmm. with the container yeah. from faraway country, mm -hmm. it's about the cash flow, I think. Oh, yes. so making sure you have enough money to always keep the products coming in before you have yes. the, this product bought and yes, the money that's right. the um, When it comes to our container, mm -hmm. it's uh, something like this size from oh, the, huge. yeah, it's very mm -hmm. huge. So, but uh, we have to pay in advance. Yes. Yes. And then what's going to happen is uh, after the container start from Japan, mm -hmm. they goes to China, they goes to um, Egypt, and then Romania and Moldova. So it takes like cost uh, takes like um, around two months. Mm -hmm. So after we I make payment, I wait for two months, and then when it arrives, I uh, make payment for the. VAT and uh, importing tax, mm -hmm. which cost me a lot. And then finally, I could place the item and start mm -hmm. uh, get the money from the items. One more thing is about uh, what customer really wants to have. Um, That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have uh, this kind of shop as uh, like I tried in Laos mm -hmm. and also Cambodia. And this is a uh, third place, first in Europe, mm -hmm. so the culture of food is kind of different and what people like to taste is also different. So it was kind of hard for me and it's still I'm struggling what kind of items should sell well, what is not, so mm -hmm. that is the kind of challenging part. What are the most popular selling okay, items? Okay, sure, sure. It's actually right here we have some. So um, we have uh, ramune. Oh, this what is, is that? Uh, kind of very Japanese style. There is a small marble bowl uh -huh. here inside. And then we push it ah, in. The I saw bowl, something like this. Yeah, that comes here uh -huh. and then we can drink something like that. So is this popular among younger people or...? Uh... Yes, true. Um, I would say for younger people, like uh -huh. maybe teenagers, 20s, yeah, they prefer. And we have a lot of taste, so they really like it. We have something like a matcha taste. Oh, and nice. Something interesting is like uh, we have... Uh, have you tried takoyaki in Japan? Yes, yes. We have uh, like a party goods. It's oh. a takoyaki taste and this is french fry taste. Wait, is this <laughs> like a carbonated water? Like s sweet drinking water? Yes, but uh, I wouldn't recommend especially <laughs> this french fry one. So for our viewers who might not be familiar to what takoyaki is, takoyaki is a famous street food in Japan and it's actually on the savory side, so it's not sweet. So it's interesting to have a soda with a savory taste, which I yeah. think is very Japanese. Japanese because when I did visit Japan, uh, you have so many interesting tastes that I think Europeans would never think of putting in a sweet drink. That's right, and uh, probably even the Japanese wouldn't <laughs> like it. They just made for like a fun mm -hmm. or something like that. I think it's uh, worldwide kind of popular yes. when it comes to mm -hmm. Japanese mayonnaise. So when it comes to this, like uh, 30s, 40s. Uh -huh. They like to purchase this one. They can make uh, some burger sauce with yes. mixing with something chili, mm -hmm. and we can also use it mixing with uh, mm -hmm. tuna. 
And this one? Miso. Yes, mm -hmm. miso. This we can use for like uh, miso soup. Miso yeah. soup is uh, yeah. Japanese soup. I feel like many Moldovans know what miso soup is because oh. it's so famous when you go to a sushi place here in mm -hmm. Moldova. Miso soup would be one of I the see. first choices. Yes, so this is very going well. This is a uh, instant miso soup. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, this is like uh, easier. Mm. We have uh, ingredient mm -hmm. already, so we just put hot water and then I'd say this kind of aging care now it's mm -hmm. going well. Which you can put uh, around your the, eyes. Yes, mm -hmm. and then it can lift up the. Oh. I think the makeup might be a bit more difficult because mm -hmm. um, there was this wave of popular Korean makeup, Japanese makeup, mm -hmm. and we have many more stores of makeup. Yes. Then we have stores of food from Japan. So I, I feel see. like in the food department, mm -hmm. you are very well positioned because there are mm -hmm. not, not much competition. That's and with right. makeup, there are yes, many. Yes, um, I heard there is a very big um, Korean skincare product yes. company. Yes. So first I felt like maybe I could also sell uh -huh. Japanese cosmetic, but uh, I still need to uh -huh. struggle like how to sell marketing, etc. Yes. I pretty much feel like uh, a lot of Moldovian people, they like uh, Japanese culture and I really appreciate it. So when I come here, first opening the shop, a lot of customers, they say like, thank you very much to coming to Moldova, which I've never experienced in other, other countries. Country. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I wasn't there when I opened, but mm -hmm. uh, this was a very, how can I say, unforgettable moment and for me. And inspiring, I yes, think. Yes, yes. So it still becomes my like uh, engine to keep me going. going. Yes. I also want to offer some cultural, Japanese cultural uh, experience mm -hmm. and also like a fun moment to the customer. Oh. Yes. Like, like this one? Yes, yes, yes. What is this? Uh, this is called wanage. Uh -huh. So we place this thing on, the, on ground. the ground and then we try to uh -huh. yes and if a customer like throws them do they win something? yes for this event they can get some of the items uh -huh. yes if they couldn't make it they have a small gift something like uh -huh. that yes i want customers to know like what is the unique japanese uh, games culture and also i want them to have a little smile in the oh. while the shopping yes it it might make the make their day better yes so we sometimes have some event like this mm -hmm. and also outside um now this is actually we are borrowing from the mm -hmm. uh, moldova japanese Japan. foundation yes that's uh -huh. right which they have uh, bunkasai mm -hmm. which have a huge um japanese festival so we also joined there to um, showing our what we have mm -hmm. and also help them to um, organize this uh, bunkasai. Yes.